Welcome back to another episode of MotoGP Mac and today we're going to talk about the LC or Honda teammates review. So let's start off with Nakagami who in my view was very very lucky to retain his seat for 2023 and I think if I'm very very honest he needs to have an absolutely massive year to retain that seat. Now, I think Agora did, did, did kind of help him, but uh, Agora is definitely on the way to LCR. There is no doubt about that. And he showed, I suppose, towards the end of the season that he was not ready yet, maturity-wise, to step into MotoGP. Also, you know, with... Alex Marquez and Paulo Spagaro leaving, you know, if they got rid of Nakagami, then the only, the only person that would have had a knowledge of the previous bikes or anything like that would have been Marc Marquez. And I don't think that is a, a good thing for Honda, if I'm honest. Um, there's no reference point to say this is much better than the old one because of this. So I think it's Ogura and a necessity that they actually kept Nakagami. Now, Nakagami is a great racer and you know something, I do wish that he would do well, you know, when he was in Poland, Aragon there a couple of years ago and he crashed, you know, I was actually gutted for him. But I guess he needs just to try and have a good solid year, become a steady rider, no crashing um, and go at how is he going to get on against the person across the garage from him? I'm not 100% sure. Rins, I can't wait to see him on the Honda. You know, he looked very comfortable, but, you know, he was still quite a good bit off where Mir was. Um, and that's the reference where where I would use it that, you know, in the first test, he was a bit behind Mir, but saying that you know I think where Rins is going to have to um, get used to and is that Honda can't bring all the parts for four bikes at every race and I think being very very honest they are going to prioritize the Repsol team to get that back so I think the LCR team may struggle with the hand-me-down parts I think parts may come all right and they will but I don't think they're going to come as fast as they would to the factory team and I think this is going to be a little bit of a wake-up call for Rins the other thing with Rins on the Honda is I don't feel that he's a V4 rider I don't feel he will adapt to the V4 as fast as Mir will so I think it's going to take an awful lot of time for him to get his head around what the Honda bike is. Now he has said you know, that it is a hard and difficult bike to ride, but it has the potential. I think that was just being nice to, to have the potential bit at, at the end, but I am very interested to see how he will adapt. Being very honest, if you were to put them together, Rins should absolutely wipe the floor with Nakagami but the biggest question mark here for me is that he was quite a long way off in in testing so can he adapt fast enough to the bike and that's the unknown question I will still back Rins 100% in the championship uh, to to beat Nakagami but I think if I'm very honest I think Nakagami's days are numbered and I genuinely believe that Agora will step into MotoGP in 2024 on the on the Indimitsu bike and I think genuinely I think Nakagami will go to the test team in place of Bradle. Not saying Bradle is not any good, but I think what would be very good for Honda is that if they have one of their test riders testing the bike that is within a second of the fast riders 
uh, on the grid and speaks the natural language of the team that are doing or running the testing. I think a lot of uh, things that get lost in translation would not get lost in translation and it would be a benefit for Honda. But I would definitely love to know your thoughts. Who do you think between the two is going to end up on top in 2023? Definitely leave your thoughts in the comments below and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video.